welcome back to Bold Life. It has been one hell of a week, literally. It's been so hot over here, I'm pretty sure I could fry an egg in my car. Of course, after properly disinfecting it, washing my hands for 20 seconds prior to the actual frying, you know, <laughs> safety first. But we have a great show for you. Make sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below. We want to know what you think. Now, I'm not much of a sports girl, like, at all, but I do enjoy the sport of basketball. I never quite know exactly what's going on, but I know that one team is supposed to get the ball in their net, and then the other team is supposed to stop them, so I think I'm doing pretty well. Now, due to the pandemic, I missed my opportunity to enjoy the basketball season to its fullest, but we're back, baby! Here with me today to talk all things NBA and WNBA is overtime host and basketball analyst, Chloe Pavlik. How are you doing? I'm good, Zayna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm hyped just like you to get this uh, basketball season underway. Yes. And uh, don't worry, sis. You don't you don't need to know all all the ins and outs. Okay. All you right. You got it. You got the gist of basketball. All right. Well, I think that's all I need. You know. So, Chloe, uh, like I said, um, I, I just need you to fill me in, help me fill in everybody else, uh, mostly myself, on what we need to know about this pandemic basketball season we got going on. So let's start with your predictions for this new season. Do you think that playing during what is usually the off season might throw the players off? Oh, I mean, 100%. I think whenever you think about it, it's pretty hard for players just to go from whatever they were doing to full-on game shape. Like, every basketball player knows that basketball shape is just a different type of beast. You can train however you want to for it, but once the game hits, you know, you're looking for those media timeouts, that second win. Um, but, you know, I've been watching some of the NBA scrimmages. The players look like they haven't missed a beat for the most part, and likewise for the WNBA. Yeah, you know, um, I, I was thinking, I was a little concerned, you know, that they might be a little off and a little shaken up, uh, especially since a lot of them, they weren't able to to really train, you know, beforehand. They were just, you know, at their houses, and, I mean, they got money, so I guess they had their little basketball courts in the houses, but they weren't able to train. But what I do want to talk about is this bubble thing, okay? So I've been reading and hearing about this bubble. The players have been in this quarantine bubble for a while in order to play. Now, do we think that's an extreme tactic just to play a sport? My personal opinion is yes. Um, I... I'm super conflicted about um, the players playing this season, um, even though, you know, I'm a huge basketball fan. So, of course, I want sports back. Um, but when you think about it, you know, we have to go to such an extreme length uh, just to get them back out on the court. And, and then same thing with, like, the NFL um, in baseball. But, you know, at the end of the day, the decision is in the players' hands. Um, and, you know, if they're comfortable with it and it works for them, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like, you know, they're taking extreme precaution on all measures. And um, as long as, you know, the NBA and the WNBA, they're doing everything that they can to keep the players safe, um, you know, then I support that. Yeah, yeah, and and speaking of the WNBA, I was going to say they usually don't get as much love as the NBA, you know? So do you think that we've been, since we've been in quarantine and basketball fans have missed so much that the love will be evenly distributed? You know, I don't think the love will be evenly distributed. Um, you know, it's still not like the WNBA is going to have every single one of their games televised, mm -hmm. um, which is tough, but... What I will say is I do think there's been a different type of hype into this season, right? Um, just go, just because of free agency, um, WNBA players linking up with each other, like Skylar Diggins-Smith, Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, all on the Phoenix Mercury, which is huge. Um, so I think people are super excited. Plus, with Sabrina Unescu coming to the league, there's been a lot of hype around her. Um, so I do think there will be more eyes on the WNBA, and they're also coming off of the number one most watched draft ever um, with the virtual draft. So I'm hoping there's a lot of hype, and, you know, people are at home even though they're starting to go outside, so hopefully everyone will tune in and watch. Yes, yes. I'm going to watch. I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little excited. <laughs> I'm excited to just, you know, watch them run back and forth up and down the court. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening. In. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us, Chloe. Yes, thank you so much for having me anytime. Um, this was super dope. If you need a team to cheer for, I'm going to give you a couple teams. Me, uh, obviously, Lake Show Baby. Um, okay. Rest in peace to the great Kobe <laughs> Bryant. But I'm Lakers till I die. For WNBA, 
Um, I got I got friends on a lot of teams, but um, my best friend is on the Phoenix Mercury, so I'm gonna be cheering for them. Okay, so those, got that's it. who you should cheer for. The Lakers and the Mercury. Got it. Done. Got it. Done. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. There is no shortage of new movies coming out. One new movie coming out on HBO Max is An American Pickle starring Seth Rogen. An American Pickle is an upcoming American comedy drama film directed by Brandon Trost. Here with us today is Kaylin Allen, who plays Kevin in the movie. Hi, Kaylin. How are you doing? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So could you tell us a little bit about your character in the movie? Yes. So I play Kevin, and the way Kevin works within the movie is that you know, uh, the movie's about this man that falls out of a pickle brine after 100 years and he starts to make a pickle company. Well, I am part of one of the people that help him to build this pickle company in this new area that he finds himself in. Okay, cool, cool. Now, how are you able to land this role? Like, where did you hear about? Did you have to audition for it? Yes, I did have to audition. So I, I got the audition from my agent. And I remember, because I work at the Ellen DeGeneres show, so uh, my audition was literally across the street from Warner Brothers. And I went over there, and I was very nervous when I first got there. I was like, because it was like one of my first auditions after moving to Los Angeles. And I was like, okay, let's do this. And so I did the audition. And it was funny, because the very next day, I got the call in the morning. They're like, you got the role. And I was like, yes, baby, let's do it, honey. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you know, this isn't the first time we've seen your face on our televisions. You know, I don't think many of us can pinpoint the exact first time we've seen your face, but we know we've seen your face. Exactly. Now, how exactly were you able to originally get your foot in the door in the entertainment, entertainment industry? And how have you been able to keep yourself relevant throughout all of this time? Yeah, well, in November 2017, I made a couple videos to some food videos on the internet. And then from there, it got the attention of Ellen DeGeneres. And then she flew me out, and I was on the show, and then she offered me a job. And ever since then, I've had my own digital series called OM Kaylin. I've done things as like walking in fashion week and doing this movie. And so I've had amazing opportunities. And I think the way that I've been able to sustain a career so far is because I'm, I'm not someone that just gets set and being comfortable and I'm always pushing myself to be better than who I was before. I love that. I love that. Now, when when does An American Pickle come out? So it comes out August 6th on HBO Max. I'm August very 6th. excited. August yes. 6th. Y'all hear this? August 6th. We got to make sure we tune in. Um, my, you know, Roku didn't really have a, a, a deal with, with HBO Max yet, but, you know, I'm going to download it on my phone. I got HBO, okay? Well, you, you get on your phone, you get on your, your computer, you know, there's yeah. many different options and avenues and if you got AT&T I think you can also get HBO Max. There we go. So I'm going to put it on my little phone and I'm going to watch I'm going to watch <laughs> watch it. Make sure you at home are watching an American Pickle coming out August 6th. August 6th. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yes. After realizing the music industry barely gives female artists the credit they deserve, our next guest took the words of the great Beyonce, who run the world, girls, and ran with it. Welcome CEO and founder of the Ladybug Festival, Gail Dillman. Hi, Gail. Hi, Zana. How are you? Thank you for having me today. Yes, yes. I'm so glad that you were able to, to join us. Now, can you tell our viewers about the Ladybug Festival? What exactly is it? Well, it's, uh, thank you for asking. It is the largest celebration of women in music in the country. Uh, we typically have had it as a live outdoor event over the last few years. But of course, with COVID this year, we had to change that. And so we went digital this year. Uh, but we host women from all over the country that come in and perform. And um, it's the only all-female festival that happens every other festival maybe women make up about 25 percent of the lineup well in this festival it's a hundred percent awesome and we're very proud of that very that's, proud of that's that. amazing that's amazing so what was your original reason for starting the festival well originally um it came at a time that we had started to do music in downtown wilmington and um one of the owners of the block of the real estate said to us hey i'd like to throw a block party and say thank you to the people who were um coming down and supporting what our fledgling efforts with music and so we we put this idea together about having a block party and at the same time we also found out that that uh, Firefly was coming to Dover, Delaware. And of course, you know, everybody wanted to be part of the Firefly lineup. And so we, we got this crazy idea and said, well, let's make this like a bug name and let's have it the day before Firefly. 
So we came up with the name of Ladybug, and we made it the Thursday before Firefly, because the first two years of Firefly were, was in the middle of July, uh, third week of July. And so that's kind of how it started as a block party. And we wanted to make it, you know, something that people who couldn't afford to go to Firefly could join in. And then we decided, hey, let's make it all about women. Wow, that's, that's honestly very creative. When I, when I originally saw Ladybug, I didn't even think of Firefly and how you guys were like, oh, let's, let's do a bug. That's so cool. I that's that so, <laughs> you know, it's so funny about, you know, it, Ladybug is also the state bug of Delaware. Really? But who Yes, I, I didn't know it at the time. Oh, wow. Yes. And you know what? Look at me. I was supporting Firefly Festival in my college years. I should have did the lady. You know what? Yes. Many times. We, we live and we learn. <laughs> now, what are some of the developments you'd like to see in the future um, with the festival? Maybe a new location or maybe a more than a single day festival? What type of yes. developments do you want to see? Well, first of all, we'd love to have it become a live festival again. Um, so we're hoping that next year we're going to be able to be back out in the world again. We actually run this in two locations in Delaware. One is in Milford and one is in downtown Wilmington. So we're hoping that next year we're going to be able to have both of those locations as well. Um, I have to say now that we've been doing a live, we did a live stream with this, um, I'm looking forward to integrating that into the festival moving forward. I want to do that again. I want to have it be live and digital as well. In the fall of this year, we're working on an educational summit for women in music. And so you can look for something happening probably around October of this year. So we're going to be featuring women speakers. Um, it'll be more interactive than our, our festival was this year. Um, but we're also going to have music and speakers. And we're looking to just embrace women and give them a platform and an opportunity to have their voices heard. Awesome. I love that. I love that. I can't wait for that to come out in October. I'm excited to see, you know, hopefully next year we'll be back to normal. We can go back outside. I'm excited because now I want to go to the Ladybug Festival. You know, I've been to Firefly two to three times. I want to go to the Ladybug Festival now. So oh, I want you to come to. It's really a great event because there, are, there really aren't any events that um, really embrace diversity of music and cultures. You know, we had every genre of music. We had everything from jazz to hip hop to country we had everything because it's not only about the music it's about the women playing and giving them an opportunity to be heard empowering them and that's what ladybug is really all about absolutely absolutely well i'm i'm looking forward to it like i said um thank you for joining us gail you're so welcome you can follow us at the ladybug music festival.com or gable music ventures and we really appreciate the support by getting the word out that women do have a platform and can be heard because they do and we can okay yeah, we do. We do. thank you so much of course of course have a good one I know we all love a good cocktail during the summer, or, you know, maybe it's just me, whatever. Well, here to show us a few favorite cocktails is Anthony, the Professor Baker. Okay, so here we go. Let's make some summer cocktails. First, we're going to start off with a mint chocolate julep. Mint juleps are usually good summer cocktails, but I wanted to add this one a little bit. I wanted to add a little bit of flair to this one. Uh, I kind of wanted to do like a mint chocolate ice cream julep, basically. So that, let's do this. So first, we're going to start off with two and a half ounces of Four Roses bourbon. And we're going to build this right into the julep cup. I would normally do three ounces, but someone's probably going to drink this later, and they might not have as much of a tolerance as I do. Next, we're going to do a rich chocolate syrup that I made. So basically, to make rich chocolate syrup, only thing you have to do is make rich brown syrup and add chocolate extract to it, organic chocolate extract. Now, here's the secret ingredient. Most mint juleps, you have to muddle mint, but this one, we're just gonna add an ounce of fresh mint liqueur that I personally made at home. It's not easy to make this stuff. What you have to do is you have to actually make simple syrup and then you have to uh, you, then you have to freeze the mint and then blitz it for about 30 seconds straight. Add one ounce of that. And now to top it off, because we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of sweetener in it, we're going to top it off with some bitters. This should negate a lot of the sweetness. And it's also going to give it a little bit of spice. This is hella Mexican chocolate bitters. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Six should be fine. Gonna go with, first we're gonna go with a couple pieces of ice just to stir it all together. Okay, get it nice and cold and mixed up. And now we're gonna fill up the rest with ice. Okay, let's stir that up. Get the outside nice and frosty. And then to garnish, you wanna overwhelm it with fresh mint. You kinda of wanna overwhelm it. You want this to be almost too much mint. Here's one. Here's another mint sprig. You always wanna hit it, you always wanna slap it on your hand so you can wake it up. Mint tends to fall asleep, the aromas tend to fall asleep, and so you want it to stay woke, you know? Now that we've overwhelmed it with a little bit of mint, put in our straw, and then you have a summer mint, mint chocolate julep. So usually when you go to the bar in the summertime, you ask for a pina colada. And what does the bartender usually says? Oh, the blender's broken. Well, now I figured out a way where we can integrate a margarita and a pina colada. Because after you tell them that you don't have a pina colada, that the blender's broken, they, the next thing they order is a margarita. So I figured out a way to integrate a pina colada into a margarita. Let's get to it. First, we're gonna take our base tin, our shaker tin, and we're going to add half ounce of coconut agave. Coconut agave is very easy to make. You just take agave nectar and just add coconut extract to it. This is important because the one, the, it's not the pina colada that people really want. They just want those flavors that go together, which is coconut and pineapple. So that's the only thing we're doing. We're just integrating the flavors of coconut and pineapple into a margarita. Next ingredient, half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Freshly squeezed. Don't get that store-bought stuff. It's way too acidic and not great for your health. Now, the, la the, other, the, uh, the, the ingredient that, co the, that complements the coconut is the pineapple juice. We're gonna do one ounce of pineapple juice. I am using dull, but feel free to use fresh pineapple juice at home. As you can see, I don't have a juicer here. Why would I have a juicer? We don't even have a blender for the pina colada. <laughs> so, so that's that. And now we're gonna go with two whole ounces of Espanita Reposado. This recipe is specifically made for a Reposado because the Reposado is aged a little bit longer than the Blanco and it carries, it's, it's much smoother. So my rule of thumb is the more aging, the more boozy the drink is because you wanna bring it, you wanna get those characteristics of the barrel out. So let's do two whole ounces of Espanita Reposado. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few cubes of ice, a few pieces of ice. All right, and then we're gonna fill up our glass with ice just ahead of time, just so that we were prepared. And attach your head to your cobbler shaker, attach your cap, Raise your arms up, horizontally shake for 10 whole seconds. Okay, you'll know when you're done shaking, when you see a nice little frosting on the outside, remove the cap, strain it right over, strain it right over the ice. It'll give you the consistency somewhat of a pina colada from the froth that develops from the pineapple juice. So, so now you see a nice little frothy layer on top. And now we're gonna garnish this with not only, not only a pineapple wedge. Okay, pineapple wedge. But we're also gonna use a pineapple leaf. And there you have it. You've made yourself a pina rita, a cross between a pina colada and a margarita. This one is extremely simple. Making it is very simple, but making the ingredient for it wasn't, wasn't that simple. I actually made it at home. So what I made at home was a fresh berry liqueur. Uh, it's a gin-based liqueur, 
And only thing you have to do is just add this to a shaker with ice and just kind of swirl it around first. So let's add an ounce and a half of this. Okay. Now, fresh berry liqueur, technically you can't call something a liqueur unless it has alcohol in it. So basically I made a fresh berry syrup and just added a little bit of uh, never sink gin to it. So once you got that going, you swirl it around. Now you add Clifton dry sparkling wine. You add about three ounces of this. And you just kind of let the bubble settle for a little bit. Let it settle, stir it up. Let it sit for a second, and then you're gonna fill a glass up with ice. This is like the most perfect brunch cocktail I've ever had. So it's, this is called a Clifton Royale because it's supposed to mimic a Kier Royale. Now, Kier Royale is typically uh, blackberry liqueur or creme de cassis and uh, champagne or Prosecco. But here, Clifton Dry is very much like Prosecco and I've already made my own blackberry liqueur. So we're just gonna take this and pour it right into the glass. And that was very simple. And then just like, the Kier, just like the Kier Royale, we're gonna garnish it with a lemon twist, but a very long lemon twist. And cheers, you've made yourself a Clifton Royale. And these are our summer drinks. Thank you for joining us. I'm gonna take that one right there. This, this one, one looks like all yours. <laughs> this one looks a little bit more like me. So I hope you guys at home are able to catch up on these, you know, these summer drinks. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This was an amazing drink. Now, you know, some of us are still at home quarantining, even though I see you. Yes, you. You going out without a mask, taking flight after flight after flight gathering in small spaces with three times the limit of people that should be there. I see you. But for those of us who are too scared to go outside, but we still need to get our workout on, Justin Crawford was able to catch up with celebrity trainer Joshua Lipsy to give us some tips for at-home fitness. Take a look. You know what I think we all love to do? Well, at least most of us, we like to work out so that we can look good. Well, here with me now is celebrity fitness trainer and founder of Core, your one-stop shop to not only keep your core tight and lean, but to stay healthy as well. Please welcome to the show, Joshua Lipsy. It's good to see you here, buddy. I hope you're ready to show us an extravagant at-home workout because this is what everybody needs in their life right now. And most importantly, something we can take with us moving forward. I'm so happy to see you. I was just telling you, you know, I want you to be comfortable in your own gym and you seem to be kind of, you got the whole setup here. So I'm excited to see what you have to show us. Now, while you show us, I have some questions in from our audience members um, who previously submitted before this segment that I'll be kind of like asking while you show us your thing. Um, but I'll let you do your thing, buddy. Kick it off, my friend. Awesome, thank you. That was a great intro. So uh, I'm gonna show the audience just a basic kind of at-home workout, uh, lower body, upper body, and core, of course. So this first exercise is kind of a staple of most of the workouts that I do. It's called a rotational lunge. So we start off, we're gonna go forward lunge here. We're gonna rotate, rotate into the hip. Step yourself back and then switch. Joshua, you mentioned, you know, a bottle of wine or something. I mean, people obviously want to know what's some good replacements for weights. Cause I mean, obviously you're, you're in a gym, but we're not, not many people are getting into gyms lately. So what are some recommendations on what we can replace weights with? Uh, I would say like the big bottles of water are great. Anything that has handles, um, you know, I guess uh, anything canned, okay, so like canned beans, anything like that are great. So the next lower body exercise is a little splay squat with half dash. So I'm gonna splay my feet. This one targets more of the inner part of your legs. So you can squat, then you're gonna lift one leg out to the side, and then do the same thing on the other side. So the next one is gonna be for your core, okay? So this one, you're gonna be down on your forearm. I like to do a little side plank twist. So you just Twisting underneath your body, open up to the ceiling, twist. Now with the side plank, you can always modify if you want to take some weight off of it, bring your top leg in front, 
and then you would open like that. And as well, if you wanted to hold a can or something at home, you can do that as well to add weight to the movement. Well, this is a good little uh, cardio exercise that people can do at home. Uh, it's basically a little burpee that I do, but it's, it's a combination of a burpee and a little ab work too. So, a little push up, and then you're gonna go cross, cross, and then you're working the obliques as well. And if you wanna make this a little bit harder, you can add a little speed to it. So just speed it up, cross, cross. The other option, the other option is to go to the outside. So if you want to target like that love handle region, instead of going across, this gets like the abs. You're going side to side. Josh, thank you for showing us all of that. And especially coming from someone like yourself who works with those uh, distracted celebrities, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not just celebs, but you, you, your clients, I'm sure, are so appreciative, especially during this time, to even get this kind of, you know, one-on-one -on -one training virtually even. So what does that look like for you? You know, my last, my last question I wanted to ask you is, you know, what has your world of training people even looked like now that everything is so virtual? So uh, I basically spend 13 to 15 hours a day in front of my iPad now. So that's... That's my life, um, but I love it. Like I love that I can stay connected with clients. I'm just very fortunate to have the clients that I have that have like supported me and stayed with me during this time. The world needs and will always need people like you. So thank you for doing what you do. We appreciate you. Our our viewers appreciate you for giving us some tips and you know workouts that we can now do at the house that are going to benefit us in the ways that we want it to because again to my question about the weights and you know cardio people might be doing the wrong things to get the results that they want so it's essential to have people like you who are experts in your field share that kind of advice with us so thank you again no problem and thanks for having me i appreciate it. that was great and that's the end of today's show. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Get our Amazon Fire TV app. Watch us on IG Live. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And stay tuned for more Bold Life in two weeks. See ya.